text me or call me. All right. Okay. Um, Mario wanted me to call him. I'm not sure what for. At the end of this year. Oh, it's recording already? Yeah. I see. Yeah, we, yeah, you call him when we're over so he can uh, stop it and then turn on the other one. Okay. So, so I can just start now and then I'll call you when I'm finished. Nope. No problem. Thank you, Mario. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay, we're on Lamed Amad Aleph, 30, Sachem 30. Amar Rava, Hilchasa. So the final halacha, Chametz Bismano, means Chametz during Pesach. If you mix it, Bain Bimino, Bain Shalom Bimino, whether it's mixed like with like or like with, with not like, is Osir Bimashu, uh, which is our halacha. Uh, uh, is also no, no matter what, whether be, whether min bemino or min besheno mino, it's a stringency because normally min besheno mino is nullified with sixty, but because of the severity of chametz, uh, it's also bemashu kira. Now shalom bismano. What about chametz after Pesach? Ben bemino ben shalom bemino muter karab shimon. Remember, we learned that Rab Shimon held that chametz after Pesach is mutter. So any mixture, whether it's min bimino or min she'en omino, the, the Rav has said the halacha is that it's permitted. But we have a question. Umi Amar Rav Hachi? How could Rav say that? V'amar Rav Rav Shimon knasa kanis. Hoyal v'avar lav v'vay yorav v'yamatzi. Fine. Rav Shimon said that chametz shavar lav ha'pesach midoraisa is Mutter. But he said it's usur because we give you a knas because you didn't uh, com you didn't comply with Bayro Bayamatse. So even a rabbinic isser in a taruvis should be should make the taruvis prohibited, certainly if you can taste it, right? If it's less than noise and tam. So the new kid is here. When did Rab Shimon say there's a knas and there's usher? That's chometz by itself. The end. Avalyadei tarubis, but chometz as a mixture, low. There was no knas at all, and therefore any mixture, if it's not the end chometz, would be permitted. The Ozder Rav Tamei and Rav is consistent. Dama Rav, Ki Avina Be Rav Dachman. When we were by the yeshiva of Nachman, or the house of Rav Nachman, after the, the after Pesach was over, Amr Lani told us, "Puku uzvinu chamir d'nei go and buy the chametz of the goyim, because uh, it's mutter, even ba'chila, certainly ba'na." Does this make a difference of what the, what the mixture is? Chometz that belongs to a Gentile after Pesach is permit, permitted. No, but according to this thing, what about does it make a difference what the percentage of mixture is of the no, Torah? any mixture. Even if 90% is uh, Chometz? Well, the, the Shulchan Aruch says like this. Chometz Shalom Bismano. That means Chometz after Pesach. Bein Shinesar Lutnea Pesach, Bein Lachra Pesach. Whether it got whether the mixture was created after Pesach, whether the mixture was even created before Pesach. Shinis Arev Bimino O Shalom Bimino, whether it's Min Bimino, whether it's Min Shalom Bimino, Botel, it nullifies, but Bitulo Be'echad Mishishi. The Rava Poskim Svurim, Shechamit Shinis Arev Achra Pesach, Botel Afilu Bero. So the Bayer Hate. So the, the tour 
said that it's one in 60. But most post schemes say, as long as you have Bittel Barov, means two to one, that's enough. Whether min bimino or min b'sheno mino. Chometz as a t- after Pesach in a tarubis. So that's very important. And we're going to continue with a very relevant uh, halachas. Amarab, kederos but Pesach yishavu. You have an earthenware kli, right? A kli cheres that absorbs. And we've learned many places in Shas that a, a, a metal kli if that absorbs iser kibolo kach polto. The way it absorbs is the way you get rid of it. So if it absorbs it through direct fire, you can heat metal. If it absorbs the iser through boiling water, you have to put it in boiling water. But earthenware kalim have no, you have to break them because the absorption is so great, you can't get rid of it. So according to Rob, remember, Rob does not hold like Rob Shimon. Rob holds like Rav Yehuda that that Chomet Shavala Pesach, even any kind, is Osir Bano. Therefore, it's not you can, so certainly the, the, we don't want you to have the Kedera during Pesach because if you cook something in it, it's going it, to, the Chomets, the Tom that's in there was going to come into your food. But you could say, well, maybe we should keep it until after Pesach. Well, the problem is, Rav holds like Rav Yehuda that says, Chomet Shavala Pesach is Osir. So that's why you have to break it. Why not just keep it until after Pesach? Let's do min v'she'enu mino and be mavatal it. So gzei radil ma'asu l'meivit b'hu b'mino. Because Rav Yehuda is machmir by min b'mino. So we don't allow min v'she'enu mino because of gzei ra min b'mino. That's rough. You don't have to break them. You can leave them until after Pesach. And the other will be in the bench, because he holds like Rab Shimon that Chomets is mutter after Pesach. The other Shmuel is Tamei. Shmuel is consistent. He told people who who were sellers of pots. You know what? Ashwuzvini akandichi. Keep the prices of your pots low. Because we eat low, because if you don't, I'm going to publicly announce that the law is like Rab Shimon. If the law is like Rab Shimon, then Chomets after Pesach is permitted. All these people will not have to buy new pots. They can use their old pots. So he warned the pot sellers, you know, keep your prices low. Afraid <coughs> the Gemara. What do you mean, Velitrishlu? So let him publicly darshan. Darshmul Rab Shimon Spirle, because Shmuel holds like Rab Shimon. So the Gemara answers Asri the Rav. Yeah, but this is the neighborhood of Rav. Rav was the more the Asra of this area, and Shmuel, of course, cannot go against Rav, who held like Rav Yehuda. Okay. Now that we did, we opened up this uh, issue of absorption, Hautanura, there was another, the Tahu Beitichya. They they smeared on the walls of the inside walls of the oven fat that came from the ta- tail. You know, of a kosher animal. So, but there was, it's fleshic. If you bake bread in such an oven, so the bread became fleshic. We've learned many times now, we're not allowed to eat fleshic bread or melchic bread, for that matter, because you're going to come to eat it with the opposite, you know, basar bachalo. So you have to always have par of bread. So he, and not only that, he permitted it forever. That means not just that, that time that you baked it, but he held that the, this oven would always, whenever you used it, 
uh, cause the breads to be flesh. And you're gonna have a problem because Dilma Asit Lumechle Bukutcha. You're gonna to come to dip your bread in kutak. Kutak was like a mayonnaise, which is milachik. It was made like with sour milk. Period. So Maysvel ask your kasha. It says, Ain Lashana Sa Isa Bechal. You're not allowed to knead the dough with milk. The imlash, you needed it. The bread is also because we, we have this gzeira, you're not allowed to make melachic bread. You're going to come to eat this bread with meat. Similarly, you should not smear the fat, fat of a tail of an animal into an oven. If you bake bread, that bread is osir. But here it says, until you heat up the tanur, which seems to say, if later on you heat up the oven and burn out the prohibited meat flavor that's in the tanur, afterwards it's going to be permitted to bake bread. And Rava Bar Eloi said it's for, forever per, prohibited. To Yufta, the Rava Bar Eloi, to Yufta. So we knocked Rava Bar Eloi out of the box. So now that we knocked Rava Bar Eloi out of the box, I might call Amma Rav Kedir for Pesach Yishaku. Why then did Rav say that earthenware came have to be broken before Pesach? Just heat them up and get rid of the the chametz dick of flavor that's in the uh, that's in the uh, that's in the pot. So Amr lay, it's different. Possum taner shematechas. The taner was not earthenware taner. It was made out of metal, and we know that metal the absorptions can come in and out. Hacha bigder shul cheres, where we know that an earthenware kli is much more absorptive and uh, you can't and therefore we don't rely on it being taken out thoroughly that's one answer the boy say or we could say both the tanur that we talked about as well as the pot are cheres are earthenware so how come the tanur you can get rid of the the fleshic absorption and by the by the Kedera, you can't get rid of the Chametz. Zeh, meaning the Tanur, has Sikan Mibifni. The fire is on the inside of the Tanur. So that creates a bigger heat. Zeh Sikan Mibachutz. A pot you put on a, a fire, the fire comes from the outside. And therefore, that's why the Tanur, you can get rid of the flavor, by the Kedera, you can't. So the Gemara asks the obvious question. Okay, so take your earthenware kalim and light the fire on the inside. So we're concerned that the owner of this klicheres is not going to do it properly because he's afraid that it's going to break through the intense heat. So hilka chai buchya. Buchi was a round kind of earthenware type of kli, where if it absorbed something, therefore has seikel you would not be able to capture something like that if you heat it up on the outside. But the imalya gumri, if you filled it up with coals, so it was is heated from the inside, shaper dami, then this specific type of kli, this buchia, would be permitted. The knives, how are we going to kasher the knives that have absorbed the chametz flavor? You know what? I bought new knives for Pesach. 
I didn't cash her my old knives. Omer lay tinich my Fine, you can. You're a wealthy man. You can afford it. Fine, but the low efshalay my people who could not afford it and they, and they want to use the same knife, but they want to kosher it. What should they do? Omer lay anakein chadatakim. I didn't mean I go buy new knives. I make them new. Katayu betina. I cover the handle with clay, and then the, the blade I fire up with fire. And then I dip the handle in the boiling water because I guess the knife they might use to, for example, roast marshmallows. You know, they would, it's sharp. So maybe you'd put a, a hot dog or a marshmallow on the tip of the sharp blade and put it directly in the fire. So we know so if the absorption occurred through direct fire, you gotta get it out through direct fire. But regular knives, you know, if you're gonna cut something hot, whatever, that, that would only be hot water. So that's why the, the handle was enough to be toivel in hot water. However, the aloha is I divided by Royskin. We're not mocked that the blade has to be fire. You could put the whole knife into a, into a boiling water. As long as it's a klirish. Klirish means it's still on the fire. That's If anybody's been to Yan Yisrael Hancock Park with David Tumim, you know that that's how we kashered everything. There was a big pot of water on a flame. That's a classic klirish and that's how we would kasher things. I'm Rav Nebrei of Yeshua. Eights, parur. Yep, yep, like a wooden spoon. Magila beroiskin of the same thing. You could, that a spoon was put into hot soup, you know, so at most, you don't have to put it into fire. You could kasher it in a klirisho. Because kabola kach, sover kabola kach polto. The way something absorbs is the way you get rid of it, right? Kabolo meaning absorption, kachpolto. That's how you get it out. Boy, my name is Hani mani de kunya. This is like some kind of china, like a, like a plate that was glazed with lead, is the way the before should explain. Hani mani de kunya. Maoli shtam yushu If this was used during the, 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 the year, could you use it on Pesach? Is this considered like a klicheres or can you kasher it? So the green, the green ceramic or whatever this was, there's no shy. That absorbs too much. White and black. That was a shy. Now if they have cracks, if it gets cracks, that's going to go into the klicheres. That means if the lead metal covers the whole klicheres, then it, it, you can say that it, the lead is a metal and maybe the klicheres didn't absorb anything, but if it has a crack, so then it's going to be a problem because the absorption is going to go into the klicheres. The Vada has a kiti boil off the shi'i mic. What if the, we're talking about a china, we're talking about it's klicheres covered with lead and it's all smooth and there's no cracks. Oh. Um, he, if you view them on the outside, you'll see sort of drops of fluid emanating from the plate. Must be Alma Bali Vasiri. This is a sign that they are absorbing, and therefore such a plate would be prohibited. You wouldn't be able to kasher it, right? We have uh, statements in Allah that a cannot, uh, you have to break it. You can't. Why don't, we, no say, why don't we say by, by glass or, and, and there also, and the cracks. Why don't we say just as they go in the cracks, we don't go that far, right? Because he won't get, the, won't get out of the cracks. Now we're talking about here a earthenware cleave that was 
that was covered with lead. It was, it was uh, I guess like they make China that way, right? It was lead covered. So we're talking about a crack in the lead so that the chavis would have a way to get into the klicheres. But if it's completely smooth, that was the question. So then they said, they viewed such a cleave, and then they, after usage, they would see bubbling coming out on the surface, implying that even though there was a lead shielding, whatever these kalim did absorb, and therefore it's usur. Because we don't say kabbalt kabbalt by that. We don't. We say it's a, the absorption is so great uh -huh. there is no mechanism of getting it out. That's why klicheres you have to break. It. Uh -huh. okay. There's no there's there's no kabbalt kabbalt by klicheres. Which we just said, a Torah heida klicheres she'ena yotz mi dofi of la'olam. It cannot get rid of the, its absorption in, in any way. This is the this is the source for that uh, for that halacha. Uh -huh. Now, why should it be different by Yayin Nesach? The Dorish Meremar, where Meremar learned. Mani de Cunha, these lead, lead, uh, drape, lead, uh, uh, these earthenware things covered with lead, whether they're black or white, when you're rookie green, sorry, you'd be able to drink from that. So why don't they absorb Yainesach? So maybe you'll tell me, because we're not ta we're talking about Stam Yena. We're talking about those of us in the Tzorim Rabbonim Shir know that, you know, Yai Nesech is Mamish, Avodah Zorah was worshipped with it. But that's not what the Gemara is talking about. It's talking about wine that was made by Gentiles. That's, that's also Yai Nesech, but it's Stam Yenam, and it's also in Rabbonim. So what are you going to tell me? Maybe the Yai Nesech is permitted because on Rabbinic, and Chameitz is Daraisa. But that's not so, because called the token Rabbonim came Daraisa token. <laughs> when the, whenever Chazal make a takana, and they made a takana of Yai Nesach, they do it with the same strength as Daraisa. So here's another answer. Armor lay, big difference. Zeta the, the, the plates covered with lead, when we were worried about by Chometz, these are, you put a hot fruit on it. But these other cups that were earthen were covered with lead was to drink wine. Which was only cold, the Zeta Shmisha, he did so name. And we already have learned in the Tsur Vashir that absorption only occurs through heat. Any, are, any, any. Yes. But they yes. talk about this, this is called glaze that's covered with glass. Yeah, like lead glaze. Lead, lead glaze. And who said it's lead, there's lead in that? Yeah, because I, that's what the Reforshim say that it's, it's talking about a, a like a, oh, ferret is lead. I, I don't know, it calls it glazed. I'm not sure it's glass. I'm not sure if you make glass with lead. It's not, it's not glass. Lead. It's it's lead. It's lead. The, the, the Mephoshim will hold that that's glass over here. If you look in the alochas, you'll see it's glass. It's a glass vessel. It's not it's a glazed. Lead. Glazed. glazed. Glazed vessel, yes. Yeah, but a glazed vessel, like China, is covered with lead. It's leaded. A glazed vessel is basically it's earthen. Kunya, plumir, bilaz, the shalcheres who vetoch be aver. Aver is lead. Look at Rashi. Kunya, flumir, the shalcheres who the kli itself is earthenware. Vetoch be aver. Aver is lead in Hebrew. Right, and, and Steins also himself says, Ofere, lead. Okay. there is lead. Hello. Hi, Ernie. Oh, uh, Alan, we have five more minutes of the daf yomi. Okay, can, no you, problem. But you can stay. You can, you can, you can continue. We're talking about uh, oh. relevant stuff. So it's so we're talking about like a glazed plate. Uh, but the nafkamina, why we say by yayin nesach it's permitted, is because that's only cold, and there's no absorption by cold. In fact, any kalim that you use with cold chametz, 
You can use, you don't have to kosher such things. Chutz min beit saor. Beit saor was like a kli that you put like sourdough in, like the, the starting dough for sourdough. Very, and you left it in there. So as we know, if you, kvisha is like cooking. So if you soak something for 24 hours, so that there can be a, a absorption of flavor, like when you cook, so when you eat something. So if, if this, if you had this sourdough in a thing for a long period of time, then you'd have to kosher such a kli. This was also something where they made some kind of sourdough bread in it, and it's also would have to be kosher. Hani Agni de Machuza. These pots of Machuza Hoyl Utadiri Le Melish Buchamira. They would they would soak their chametz in there for a long period of time. Umash Bachamir, Kibe Sor Shikimutsu Kasha Dami. Would be treated the same way like these sourdough things, and you'd have to kasher it. Pshita, why of course, Mao the same Kivin de Ravicha. Maybe they're wide open. And therefore, there's a lot of air that gets in, and maybe it doesn't absorb properly. That it does absorb. Mishnah. A, a, a genta loaned a Jew money. The Jew gave him whiskey, chametz, right, as a mashkon, as collateral. And the Jew defaulted on the loan. So the, the question is, when is it viewed that the Gentile took ownership? So the Gemara Mishnah says, Mutter Banov. It's viewed as if he took ownership the moment it was deposited by him, which was before Pesach. So therefore, it's as if the Gentile owned it before Pesach and through Pesach. Therefore, that whiskey is mutter for everybody because it was owned by a Gentile. And we've learned chametz owned by a Gentile is mutter bano afterwards. However, the opposite case, Yisrael Shilvis Nochri, a Jew loaned a, a Gentile money and he took possession of the Gentile's chametz before <laughs> Pesach. And then the, the Gentile defaulted on the loan. Chaser bano, because again, the same halacha, Retroactively, once the loan defaulted, it's as if you were the owner of the collateral from the beginning. And therefore, this is Jews' chametz, which is going to be usher after Pesach. Says the Gemara, Itmar Balchov, the regular case of a creditor, Abaya Omar, Limafreya who goes it. That, that if, the, if the creditor took a collateral, it's as if he, he it's as if he took ownership of it retroactively from the moment he got it. The no, it, it, it's it's it, it means if the default took place thirty days later, even though the mashkon was deposited thirty days before, it doesn't really change ownership until at that point when he defaulted. Now, the Agnes Lloyd of Zabin but when the bar will magdish something or sold something. So kul amal asim The creditor can go and get that back, right? If he goes to the guy who borrowed money from him, he doesn't have the money. So there was already a pre-existing lien on whatever it was. So whether he gives magdish it or whether he sells it, the 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 malva can can go and be toyrific, can be can go and collect it from where it was set. And we will explain this a little further in detail tomorrow. Okay. So then the uh, Marty, welcome, Shalom Aleichem. Good to see you. I didn't tell you that today we did the DAFs at 7.30 because we, and, and we have a, a couple sheer Novi at eight o'clock. Uh, okay. We're now on Shoftim. We did Yoshua and now we're almost halfway through Shoftim. So couples join us between eight and nine, Sunday night. <laughs> But every other night it's eight o'clock, the Dafyomi. Got it. Okay. So Mario, let me call Mario because he wanted me to end. We have to end, we tape this year, so we have to end the first year, and then we'll start the Navi Shear shortly.
Mario's on. Okay, Mario, so you can close the Dafyomi and we can start the Navishir. Okay. Okay. <laughs>